Welcome to segment two of Citizens Forum, uh, being filmed on August the 14th. I'd like to thank our volunteer crew and the Shaw staff who make it all happen. Our guest in this segment is Elizabeth Woodworth. Elizabeth is a co-founder of the 9-11 Consensus Panel. And we're going to be talking about 9-11. I'll just introduce it by saying that I don't believe the official 9-11 story. Uh, I think it's impossible. And I think that hundreds of millions of people around the world would agree with me. It's an issue that our politicians and media refuse to engage in, but it's one of the most important issues in the world. Uh, Elizabeth, the, the founder of the 9-11 Consensus Panel, I think you said is David Ray Griffin, an author and uh, who has been nominated three times for the Nobel Peace Prize for his books, I guess, on 9-11, uh, something I didn't know until today. We've got a lot to cover, uh, and I think people are going to find this interesting, informative, and hopefully a bit shocking. So let's start off with question number one, which is, what is the role of the 9-11 Consensus Panel? Thank you. The 9-11 the Consensus Panel reviews both old and newly discovered information about 9-11 that's emerging all the time through FOIA requests and uh, old footage that is no longer available from the original day that's been long buried. So we go back and we, we're 24 of us that are reviewing this information and we're hoping that um, the standard of review that we offer will be suitable for the media to take uh, a legitimate interest in. They've never been sure. I think the standard of review you do will be great but the media, it's not that the material isn't good or there, the media, I think, has been told not to cover this issue. I'm assuming that's why it's never covered. I agree that it probably has been told that, but it can only refuse, it can only offer uh, 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 plausible um, refusals in the, when it can point to certain areas where people are not very credible. But it's pretty hard to ignore a group of 24 um, uh, professionals. There's six PhDs on the, on the panel. Uh, there are three attorneys. There are some ex-NASA people. Uh, there's a medical doctor and there's several commercial airline pilots. So uh, taken, taking that group together uh, with the, the review model that we use, which is based on a medical review model, the Delphi technique, where all the the, uh, the reviewers are blind to one another when they're, when they're assessing the, the evidence. They don't get to talk about it. So, and they go through three rounds of review each time. So that, and each time the feedback is incorporated and sent out again, it's the same way that medical doctors arrive at their consensus statements. Now, you say here that there are also six well-known honorary members of the consensus panel, including a British MP, a former German cabinet minister, uh, recently the honorary president of the Italian Supreme Court joined the group, as did French movie producer, director and actor Matthew uh, Kasovitz. So this is a group of people who are, you know, in, in the hierarchy of the world, fairly high up, reputable to some extent, we hope. That's and, right. Uh, and, and they're looking at one of the most important issues in the world, which is what happened on 9-11. And it's got to be covered. This is such a vitally important issue. The me it's up to us to force the Canadian media, at least, to start to cover this. Because outside of this show and talking to Elizabeth, we never hear about the 9-11 consensus panel. So why is this group working, uh, you know, 12 years later, I guess, um, isn't 9-11 history by now? That's how the world, the media looks at it. But um, one of our panel members recently described 9-11 as the vulnerable underbelly of the dragon uh, that is causing so much conflict with the Middle East. Uh, some people refer to this dragon as manufactured terror. Now what is meant by manufactured terror? That is the, uh, the, the terror alert that's going on every day uh, I think it's coming out of the Pentagon or the U.S. government somewhere, and the, the alert ranges from green, which is no terror, up through yellow, orange to red, when terror is high. Uh, so 
this, this is constantly being fed through the media, as are the images of 9-11. And a lot of people think that this is manufactured terror that, that has been given, is being fed to the public as a way of keeping up a public consensus for the role that the, um, the West is taking in the Middle East. So it's maintaining fear within the North American population. And the European population. That's true, and the European. Yeah. Now this doesn't include the terror that the United States government is perpetrating across the rest of the world. I guess that doesn't, that doesn't have a color. Uh... No, no, that, that doesn't matter. That's, that's another issue. Um, do you want to mention the, the Bradley Manning and Julian Assange and Edward Snowden issues? Yes, um, the 9-11 the, the issue is basically buried, and it's, it's, but it's starting to, the tip of the iceberg is starting to emerge, and the iceberg that's underneath is starting to come out because of people like Julian Assange, uh, Bradley Manning, and recently Edward Snowden, of course, who's made huge news. And before Edward Snowden, there were very senior NSA uh, career officials who were blowing the whistle on the way that NSA changed its its um, uh, uh, policy of collecting, you know, of, of basically wiretapping all the American citizens, and that because started, of 9/11, and not just because, but before William Binney, he he talks about how they started back in February 2001, uh, uh, and it, so they were actually preparing themselves for 9/11 back then. So can we say that uh, there are a lot of questions about 9-11, about what really happened on that day and who was behind it, but 9-11 is now being used to justify the complete and total spying by the U.S. government on the American people, and Canadian as well. That's where it started. That's where the change in spying really did start, yes. Uh, you wanted to mention a comment, I think, by uh, an associate of the consensus panel, Lieutenant Colonel Shelton Langford, a retired U.S. Marine Corps pilot, and he wrote uh, something about 9-11 that is really worth listening to. Yes. Uh, 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 Mr. Shelton uh, won a lot of awards in Vietnam for his flying. He was a very committed uh, patriot to the United States. And he's just immensely disappointed with what 9-11 represents. And he wrote, September 11, 2001 seems destined to be the watershed event of our lives and the greatest test for our democracy in our lifetimes. The evidence of government complicity in the lead up to the events, the failure to respond during the event, and the astounding lack of any meaningful investigation afterwards as well as the ignoring of evidence turned up by others that renders the official explanation impossible, may signal the end of the American experiment. It has been used to justify all manner of measures to legalize repression at home and as a pretext for behaving as an aggressive empire abroad. Until we demand an independent, honest, and thorough investigation and accountability for those whose action and inaction led to those events and the cover-up, our republic and our constitution remain in the gravest danger. And that is written by? A Lieutenant Colonel. Uh, Shelton Langford, Shelton retired Lang U.S. Marine Corps pilot. And I'm just going to read the first sentence of, of what you just said, which is that the evidence of government complicity in the lead-up to 9-11, the failure to respond during the event, and the astounding lack of any meaningful investigation afterwards, as well as the ignoring of evidence turned up, turned up by others that renders the official explanation impossible, may signal the end of the American experiment. I mean, that's something we should, you know, uh, these are powerful words, the kinds of words we never hear from our political and media leaders. Um, you wanted to talk about some new evidence that the consensus panel has been investigating. Yes, uh, we, a lot of people know about the standard evidence that has kind of leaked out about the, the idea that the Twin Towers were brought down in controlled demolition because they fell straight down into their own footprints at free fall speed 
and Building 7 also that day. Okay, so is it the opinion of the consensus panel that the three buildings were brought down by controlled demolitions? We don't actually venture opinions. We just point to what didn't happen okay. and we ask for further investigation. But we infer that that probably did happen. But that's, people are familiar with that, but there's new things that, that people haven't heard about that we're bringing forward. And one of them is the famous Let's Roll flight, uh, Flight 93, the one that, um, that crashed in, Shanks, in a field in Shanksville in, in Pennsylvania. And that, th they've made movies about the heroism on that flight because um, they, they, the passengers were leading a, a revolt against the hijackers. This is the, this story. Is the story, the myth. Uh, however, if you go back to the, the telephone call that was made from that flight, it was made by a man called Todd Beamer to um, a GTE uh, telephone supervisor, uh, Lisa Jefferson. Uh, she said that uh, the, the, whole, the whole telephone call seemed kind of unreal. Um, there was no, he was very, very calm throughout the, the phone call. This phone call, she was surprised it lasted as long as it did. It lasted an hour and five minutes. And she said all the phones were jammed that morning and it was very unlikely that any call would last that long. And finally, um, she heard a, a kind of a, um, a, a final sound and, and some air rushing and so on. And the, the 15 minutes after that plane crashed at 10.03, um, the line was still open. And she said, I could tell it was still open because it makes a certain sound while it's still open. It, it, it's kind of a squealing sound. And, and she said, so that was another puzzle about this phone call upon which the whole Let's Roll story uh, so depended. So everything that's known about that flight, Flight 93, which crashed in Pennsylvania, is known because of the phone call. That's right. And there's questions about the phone call. Serious, serious questions. Many, and there, and we cover those. There's a whole consensus point devoted to to uh, that that phone call on our website at consensus911.org. Now, equally important is the fact that there was never where the airplane crashed, because the story is that the the uh, the passengers overcame the hijackers, and in the ensuing fight, somehow the plane crashed. But where the plane crashed, there was never any evidence of an airplane. That's true. That's, that's another incredible story. The, um, the plane crashed, they said, in soft soil. It used to be a, a strip mine. And it completely buried itself. That was the ultimate story. But the, the officials who arrived there first, uh, when they, you know, they, it was reported, they couldn't see any evidence of a crash at all. And, and in, after a while, uh, they found that there was an engine uh, a mile away, one of the engines, and there, were, there was debris raining down eight miles away at a marina. Uh, so the government established three different debris fields that were uh, closed to the public. So it's very hard to understand how the plane could have completely buried itself in a field and still have its parts all over the place. So the assumption is then that the plane was shot down for some reason by the U.S. Air Force. It, that's been the, that has been the controversy. Now people may believe this or not believe it, but the amazing thing is that these questions are never asked. It's as if none of the truth happened. We get the official story and obviously the media has to be complicit in it because their job is to make sure no questions are ever asked. When there is no evidence of an airplane in the spot where the airplane is supposed to have crashed. I saw on YouTube years ago, right after the crash, uh, the local police and fire officials were there being interviewed by the local television station and they all said there's no evidence of an airplane here, just a little bit of ash and some smoke. That's right. Um, there are also serious problems with Flight 77, the, which is the supposed airplane that supposedly hit the Pentagon. And this is also quite shocking. Yes. Uh, the, there's a big controversy uh, about the evidence as to whether a plane hit the Pentagon or something else hit it. Uh, the consensus panel hasn't felt that, that we could find consensus on that issue, which is the main issue. But we have consensus on other issues. And one of them is that we recently found from a private contractor's website, a man had gone through the video footage from 300 surveillance cameras 
at Dulles International Airport, which is where the five hijackers for the uh, Flight 77 left from. And the government did not report any footage at all, any images at all from these 300 cameras. They're everywhere. They're in the, the lounges, the boarding gates, the entrances, the ticket counters. They're everywhere in the airport. All they succeeded in producing was a little bit of video footage with no timestamp or date on it. And looking at that, uh, we have an expert on the panel who can assess video footage. He says that's not a surveillance camera. It's, it's a, a consumer video camera from so that So 300 time. video cameras in the airport and not one picture of any of the supposed hijackers who got on the plane. Has ever been re released to the public. Yes. So you'd think, with all the controversy about that flight, that they would have released those pictures if had they had them. Now, unfortunately, we've only got two minutes left. We're almost out of time. <laughs> um, maybe you can mention something about the drills, which is point six on your sheet. Oh, because yes. Because there are always drills when these terrorist things happen. We always find out the government is conducting a drill. That's right. Um, this is an extraordinary piece of information. Um, every year there are big major Air Force drills that take up almost the whole resource of the United States and they have them in April and October, Vigilant Guardian and Global Guardian. And somehow they were all, those two major drills plus ten others were all scheduled for the morning of September the 11th. And one of the drills was actually moved from its pre-scheduled date in October. Uh, so. The, the, there was absolute pandemonium that morning because the, 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 the planes were all occupied with these drills and uh, the, meanwhile the, the, the live issue was happening, the real world issue. So that's, that's something that um, uh, the big question there is who put those drills, who scheduled them all for the morning of September the 11th? I'd like to thank, thank you Elizabeth. Um, I, for me this is a big issue the question of 9-11, what really happened on that day? We need an honest investigation. There's no reason the Canadian government doesn't do one. We've been involved in at least two wars because of 9-11. Um, the issue is of vital importance. The media is, is betraying us yet again on this issue. The politicians won't say a word. Thank you very much, Elizabeth, for your work and the work of really tens of thousands of others who are never mentioned anywhere. but but who are trying to find out the truth. And thanks for watching this segment of Citizens Forum.